Hey there, mama friend, and welcome to the 5-Minute Mom Podcast, where we'll talk about real life, real faith, real fast. To learn more about all of our co-hosts or to sign up for a free monthly resource email, be sure to check out all the links in the podcast show notes. Hi, friend. It's Simi. You know what they say, you always remember your first. And I remember the very first time Mariah, my firstborn, asked to pray by herself. We had been praying together every day at pre-K drop-off line. And she would come to the passenger seat and we would hold hands. I would pray and she would repeat after me. But this particular day, she said, Mama, I do it myself. (laughs) And she sat in the front seat and I held her chubby little hand and we were sitting in front of her little elementary school and she began to pray her little prayer. And it started out, thank you, Jesus, for this day. And as her prayer went on, I noticed something. That little girl stole my prayer. She stole my prayer, y'all, like word for word. And as we said, amen, I couldn't help but tear up because this is exactly how prayer is meant to be taught and passed down. My little girl had been listening to the way I prayed, the words I prayed. She listened and learned. The other day, I was tucking them into bed, and I heard her little brother, Gideon, pray. And he prayed just like his sister prays now. You know, in Proverbs, it says, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. And we hear that, but we don't truly understand what that means. How do we train up? Well, it tells us in Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 18 on when God instructs the children of Israel, how they are to train up their children. He tells them, he commands them, fix these words of mine in your hearts and minds. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Teach them to your children, talking about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates so that your days and the days of your children be many in the land that the Lord swore to give your ancestors as many as the days that the heavens are above the earth. So how do we train up? By passing down, by passing down the truth of God's word. And we see this in the New Testament. We see the disciples asking Jesus to teach them to pray. He gives them a template and trains the disciples on prayer. And also, isn't it interesting that the disciples who had been with Jesus through all the miracles, the healings, and the amazing, powerful teaching moments, they don't ask, teach us to heal or do miracles or preach like you. No, they say, Lord, teach us to pray. I think the disciples understood that there was something about the ministry of Jesus that was beyond what everybody else saw and experienced. See, we read the Bible and often we're enamored by the cool stories, but the disciples understood prayer was the secret sauce. They heard him pray for others. They saw him leave the crowds and walk away from them to be in the secret place in solitude and silence with the father. And now they didn't just want to be with him in those moments. They wanted to pray with him, pray like him. Notice that Jesus didn't initiate this moment. They asked. It was their desire. But if they hadn't seen him do it, they would never have asked. Mamas, I think we forget that our kids see us going to work, cooking meals, driving them places, cheering them on at games, helping them with their homework, taking them to Disney and church even on Sundays. But are they seeing us pray? Do they hear us pray for others? If they don't, they'll never understand that prayer is our foundation as the follower of Jesus. And it'll never be theirs.
So if you want your kids to desire to pray with you, to pray like you, I want to encourage you, let your small habit breathe. Pray out loud. They need to see you pray. They need to hear you. Just like Jesus gave his disciples words to pray. Give your children words.